Hello! Today I will show you how to set up a Linux development and learning environment in Windows using WSL and the Windows Terminal. Thanks for joining me. The first step is to go to the Microsoft Store and install Windows Terminal. This application allows you to organize and navigate shell sessions with ease. You can open multiple instances of native PowerShell, a, com a Windows command prompt, or the Linux shell sessions. If you ever need to spend a good deal of time in the terminal, this application will serve you well. The next step is to install WSL. But first, what is WSL? The acronym WSL stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux. It is a method for starting what are essentially lightweight virtual machines on top of the Windows OS. WSL allows for relatively seamless integration of Linux with Windows. This gives you access to both file systems. You can run Linux commands or applications in Windows, or even use Windows applications in the Linux file system. There are two approaches to installing WSL. The first is the streamlined method for Windows 10 users who have a 2004 update, build 19041, or Windows 11 users. To check which version of Windows you are running, press Windows key plus R and enter the command winvir to check which version of Windows you are running. Once you've confirmed, if you are, if you are running version 2004 or Windows 11, then you will be able to type this command, wsl dash dash install. And that will go through the entire installation process, setting up uh, WSL version 2, and it will provide the default Ubuntu version, which you will then go through the process of setting up a Unix username and password, um, and all of the rest of the, uh, of the configurations as laid out very well in the Microsoft, the Microsoft tutorials for working in WSL. This is an excellent, an excellent guide. Highly recommend it. So if you were to enter that command, it would go through the process. For me, it's not going to do that because I already have WSL installed. So it just shows me all of the various flags or options that I can uh, use. Okay. If for some reason you didn't, oh, and I should say that you need to check and make sure that you got WSL version 2, not WSL version 1, and you can check that by doing WSL-L-V. And you see what that does is it shows all of the different distributions that I that are currently installed in your system. For me, that's Ubuntu, Kali Linux, uh, let's see, I have three, three versions of Ubuntu, uh, SUSE, and you see that all of them are version 2, as over here on the right-hand side. Okay, This is important because you want to make sure that you're working in version 2, not version 1. If for some reason you didn't get version uh, 2, or like you had a problem, if, you're, if your build is less than 2004, for any reason you had a problem with it, not to worry you can still get WSL2 and, and the Linux system. So for that, we will need to enter some commands into the terminal, but for that, we will need to run it as administrator. There we go. So I think I'm running this as, yes, administrator. So you see, currently have administrator privileges with this. So once you were in here, then you would need to type this command, which I already have saved in a notepad right here, and you would need to run this command. This command and all other important ones will be uh, uh, listed below this video. So what this does is you can see it turns on the feature name Windows Microsoft sub uh, Microsoft Windows Subsystem for Linux. The next command that you will need to run would be this command. There we go. So you see here, this turns on virtual machine platform. Okay, after you have entered those commands, you will then need to reboot your computer. 
that was the command line method for changing those features. If you ever want to change them in a more graphical or uh, uh, in, in a using the graphical user interface, you can go to the Windows key and type in turn Windows features on or off. And if I scroll down here, you see Windows subsystem for Linux. The box is checkmarked and also where is it? Virtual machine platform. That's also been checkmarked. So now the next thing we need to do would be to set the default version to version two. Okay. So for that, we type in WSL dash dash set dash default dash version. Now we need to install a Linux distribution or distro for short. For this, we first need to see which versions of Linux are available to us. For that, we type in WSL dash dash list dash dash line. And those are all the versions that we could install on our system. Now, the command to install a version is WSL dash dash install dash it would be dash D for distribution. And then let's say, for instance, that I wanted to install Ubuntu. It doesn't autocomplete. There we go. If I wanted to install Ubuntu, it says it's downloading Ubuntu. All right. So you see it installed and launched. Now you will be prompted to enter a username and password for your Unix, your, your Unix system. Bear in mind that this is your, these are your unique credentials for the Linux environment. They don't really have any connection to your Windows credentials. Once you're in here, you can confirm that you are indeed running Ubuntu by typing in LSB underscore release dash A. And you see that I am currently running Ubuntu version 22.04.1. Codename Jammy. All right, the rest of this I'm going to do using Windows Terminal. So you see, this is just this has opened up a terminal box, a terminal emulator, if you will. But I'm going to do it here in the terminal over here. So if I go over here, and it's this version of Ubuntu. So let's let's uh, try some various commands. So I can print my working directory, home Nate. I can make a directory. I can make a directory. I'll call it my direct and cd into my direct there we go ls so you see i can chain my commands Print working directory it shows i'm now i have gone from home to nate to my directory i can touch a file so i'll say my file dot txt and I can then open that file with vim, my file.txt. There we go. And in here, I can enter some text. This is a line of text. Hello world. There we go. And then I'll just put a blank line at the bottom. Shift ZZ to close. And I can clear my screen, same as in Windows PowerShell, using the clear command. Uh, I can type ls here, and you see I now have my file.txt. I can use the cat command, and you'll see I'm auto-completing by, by typing the first few characters, uh, and then uh, pressing the tab, it will auto-complete. You see that this is the text. This is a line of text, hello world. Now, or you can access your Windows files from within Linux, and you do that by typing cd forward slash, yeah, forward slash mount, and then c, ls, now it says that I can't, I can't use, I can't use uh, ls, but if I do sudo ls, and there we go. So now I was able to list all of my files there, as you can see. Excellent. Clear. Uh, I can then go back to my home directory. 
uh, if I print my working directory, you see I'm in home Nate. Now here's, here's one fun thing that I'll end with, and that is you can open up uh, file explorer, the Windows file explorer within WSL. So if I do that, explorer.exe, and I want to open it here, there we go. So now I have opened up the Windows file explorer within, within uh, the file system. So I can see I already have this file here. This is a line of text from Windows. And I can say this is another line of text from Windows. There we go. And I can save this, close it over to Linux, and I can type ls, and you see I have my text dot txt. So if I cat the contents of that, so if I press tab twice, it shows me that I have two options. I can either do my text dot txt or my underscore first. So if I then follow by capital T and then tab completion, there we go. This is a line of text from Windows. This is another line of text from Windows. So that's pretty fun. Uh, I'll type through the screen again, and then I can exit this tab. Okay. Now I can see which versions of WSL are currently running by doing WSL-L-V. And it shows me that I have I have all these versions of Ubuntu and SUSE and Kali. And you see that Ubuntu is currently running. So it takes a while for it to shut down even though you give the exit command. But if I want to shut down all instances of WSL, then I can do WSL dash dash shut down. Okay, and then if I look at WSL dash L dash V, you see that indeed all of those versions have been shut down. That was a short introduction into using WSL on Windows. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions, please leave them below in the comments. Goodbye.